Hey guys, it's Allie. Welcome to another Thrifty Thursday, where I visit a local thrift store in search of tingly items to share with you. Now, if you've never seen Thrifty Thursday, there are three basic rules that I have to follow. Rule number one, I can't spend over five dollars. Rule number two, the item or items that I purchase have to be not only tingle-worthy, but also useful to me in my own life. And rule number three, each time that I visit the thrift store, I have to bring something of mine to donate. Something that I am not using, but might be of benefit to somebody else. So before I get started on that, I want to let you know, um, some of you might know this, this video is a reshoot. I shot a full Thrifty Thursday uh, the other day and ended up having to reshoot because there was just way too much background noise from neighbors and workers outside the apartment. Now, that was something that I was able to share with some of you on my Facebook. And so, I just want to take a second to encourage you, if you haven't already, to like my page on Facebook so that you can get updates like that. When delays and stuff happen, I want to be able to share it with all of you, and Facebook is just one really good way to do that, so you'll find the URL to my uh, like page at the end of this video. Cool, so that's all. <laughs> so on this trip to the thrift store, I took a picture of the things that I donated so that I could show you guys. I donated a set of hair rollers that I had never used a small uh, baby towel from when my son was really young, a couple of pillowcases, and then a plate box uh, that I was using to hold uh, some puzzle pieces uh, from a jigsaw puzzle that I'd never used. So that's what I donated. And what I found, I'm going to show you close up, but first I found this incense burner. That is also a box. And I was really excited to find this. Because uh, I love incense. And it even has a little trap door that houses a little baggie of incense sticks. So I'm going to show this to you close up. And the other thing that I found, I'm so excited. First of all, I got the incense burner for $1.99. And this I found for uh, $2.99. And this is a Piao Yi teapot. It's a little uh, sort of self brewing teapot. And I'm going to use this to make a cup of loose leaf tea that I have. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this stuff. I'm gonna switch shots real quick and show everything to you close up. Okay guys, so here is my little incense burner box thing. And I wanted to show it to you closer up uh, because I really love this box. It's got a lot of really pretty intricate uh, sort of designs carved into it. You might notice that I have this little spotlight happening, and that's because um, when I light the incense, which I'm going to do, I uh, want you guys to be able to see the, the smoke rising. It's going to look cool, so that's why this is here. So here's, here's my little box. really looking forward to lighting the incense because I love the smell. It doesn't even really matter what scent it is, to tell you the truth. Um, I just love the smell of incense burning in general because it's sort of a kind of a nostalgic thing for me. Um, as some of you may know, uh, some of you who have seen my 
it was my belated ASMR day video uh, where I shared with you guys a, a sculpture that my mother uh, had done and told you a little bit about my background and um, anyway, for, for those of you who have seen that video, you know that my biological mother passed away when I was a kid and from that point on, my stepmother was really responsible for doing all the all the mothering in my life. So anyway, she and I refer to her as my mom also. She uh, always used to burn incense in a box, actually really similar to this one. in In her bedroom, many times she was sewing or. She liked to play, uh, she liked to play computer games, she liked to play Diablo and, um, um, Myst and games like that. And she, I just have memories growing up of her sitting in her room reading or playing her games or sewing or whatever it was she was doing, working maybe, and smelling the incense smoke. And so it's a really kind of cozy nostalgic, comforting smell for me. Because I would just sit in there with her and do whatever. Read or draw or just watch her play. I really liked watching her play Mist. It's really, it was really kind of relaxing, pretty kind of a game. Anyway, that's one reason that I really love incense. It's just it reminds me of those times. like this, you can either burn your incense stick with the box open, like this, or you can keep it closed and the smoke will rise through these openings here. And I think at first I'll keep the box open so that you guys can see the stick burning, because it can be kind of mesmerizing to watch. But then once it's time for me to make my tea, I'll uh, close the box and just let it, let the smoke rise. Okay. I'm gonna open the little <laughs> secret door here. sound it makes. Just a soft little opening closing.
a little baggie of incense sticks. And they smell. Yeah, this <laughs> it smells just like the kind my mom was always burning. I think it might be sandalwood. It's kind of a woody, woody sort of earthy smell. It's really nice. It's like uh, musky. incense a lot in high school in my room not at my high school when I was in high school <laughs> uh, in my bedroom and um, I liked those little black cone ones I like to set them up and because you set them up on a surface of some kind and you burn the tip uh, and I really enjoyed watching those little black ones kind of burn down it was, you could just sort of sit and become hypnotized hypnotized by it. I really enjoyed doing that. But there was this one uh, scent. This one, I can't even remember where I, where I got it. Um, it was sticks just like these and they were blue. And they were uh, rain scented. Incense sticks. And I think if I had to choose a favorite of all the aromas. I think that one was my favorite. It just had this wonderful, sort of fresh, kind of sweet, watery uh, scent. And, but it still smelled a little bit musky, kind of like these. And when it burned, it was just wonderful. And I loved that kind. And I, I should really go get some. I don't remember where I got it, but um, I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to find again. It was really nice. I'm not sure if you can see. The stick is... Uh, changes shapes. It's got a very thin end from about here to the end. And this is where you... Uh, this is the part of the incense that you place in the holder. And the rest of it is what burns. And, um, I'm actually not sure what this is covered in, but it's kind of powdery in it. Um, well, it's scented, obviously, and it, uh, it burns down, and it becomes just a, a long ash. And I really like, <laughs> I like watching the, the incense stick sort of burn down and become this long sort of ash. Sometimes it curls up, curls under. It looks really neat. So, what you do is just open. 
open up the box and right in here, right in this inner edge there's a, a little hole cut into the wood and you place the end of the stick through the hole and it sort of props it up inside the box so that's what I'm going to do <laughs> but I have to find the hole first oh there it is okay. I'll show you okay. see how it came out the other end there? flame will be at the end and then you just blow it out and the tip will stay kind of lit and red and glowing and uh, that's how it burns down and that's where the smoke comes from so I'm gonna get my lighter and light the tip if I can find my lighter loud, so I think I'll probably just um, edit out the sound of the lighter clicking, just because it's kind of abrasive. Here we go. Okay. So now we've got a nice little flame, and I'm going to let it burn for a minute and then blow it out. A lot of different cultures use it, um, but it's not really known when when it started. But the very earliest uh, recorded uses of incense in um, kind of like rituals, like religious ceremonies spiritual rituals, things like that, um, was in, I believe, China in uh, 2000, around, around 2000 BC, so, although cultures before that very well could have been burning incense. that the word incense comes from uh, the Latin word, I believe it's incendier, incender, incendier. Well, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but no one really knows how to pronounce Latin words. Can you see that little ash forming there on the end? I like that. Um, oh, and that Incender or incendier. Uh, in Latin, it means to burn. That's where incense comes from. Makes sense. <laughs> and I know that um, some. 
maybe not all, but some Native American cultures do something similar, but it's uh, it's what's called smudging. I believe, and that's kind of like burning incense. It's where they burn a, a bundle, like a little bunch of certain types of herbs. do that in order to um, purify a place or bless a place or, or a person it can be used for a person as well um, so I think there are some tribes that, that do that and some that don't but that's also something that has been of the New Agey folks. Uh, it's a pretty common practice. sense of talking about it kind of reminds me of um, this thing I learned about recently. It's really it's kind of related, I guess. Um, but I learned about this weird substance that's called um, uh, it's called ambergris or ambergris. really fascinating. Um, basically, what it is, is this very, very rare, um, expensive substance. Um, it's very expensive. The, the best kind goes for, uh, like around $10,000 per pound. So, very, uh, very expensive and very highly sought after. But what it is, is it's this, um, substance, I guess, uh, it comes from sperm whales. And, uh, what it is, is... Uh, okay, well, sperm whales primarily eat, um, a squid. Things like uh, cuttlefish and squid have uh, little beaks on them, and cuttlefish have uh, something I'm not sure. But anyway, the beaks of the squid that the sperm whale is eating are um, uh, indigestible. The, the sperm whale can't uh, digest certain parts creatures that he eats, so in order to um, kind of protect himself from uh, from those parts his stomach or his intestines, I'm not sure um, produce this uh, kind of fatty substance that acts as a coating over those parts that he can't digest. And it's really, really gross. <laughs> oh. I, I won't be too graphic about it, but anyway, he has these just masses of stuff in his stomach coated in this, in this substance. And it's just in his stomach um, until it isn't. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be explicit. <laughs> leaves his body <laughs> eventually and kind of just rolls around in the ocean and what's interesting about it and the reason I'm telling you the reason that it relates to this is that 
when it's inside of the whale, if you were to uh, smell it, it would smell really, really foul and, and awful. And it would look kind of like black and kind of like tar, I think. And it just has a really awful smell, but once it leaves the whale and it's just been kind of rolling around in the ocean and then becomes uh, oxidized, it actually produces this really wonderful aroma that is really, really highly valued, um, especially among uh, perfume makers. And it's so interesting. And the reason I even thought about this is because um, it's not really, I don't think it's really highly used in incense anymore, but it, uh, it used to be in uh, early, uh, kind of earlier cultures. It was burned as, as a perfumed incense because the smell is apparently so uh, fragrant and wonderful. It's interesting. I don't know if I've ever smelled it myself because I don't use or, or buy uh, luxury perfumes, really. Um, but it is used in a lot of very expensive luxury perfumes. But anyway, it's said to have sort of a, like a sweet, musky woody smell um, that is just incredible so uh, if you have used or own Chanel number no. 5 I believe that that contains ambergris so now you know Interestingly, though, it is uh, illegal to have it in the United States because the sperm whale is an endangered species. And I don't fully understand that. To tell you the truth, I would have to read more about it. Or maybe one of you can explain it to me. But I don't really understand. Something that um, the whale has excreted, then I'm not sure what the what the problem would be if you were collecting it, because the whale obviously isn't using it anymore. But anyway, that might just be really ignorant. the law is in place to prevent people from po poaching whales for for this substance or something. I, I don't know. But anyway, if you happen to find some uh, on the beach here in the U.S., then I advise you not to keep it because you could get in a lot of trouble. Okay, well, I think I'm going to let this burn down while I go get my uh, water boiling for my tea. Maker. 
making extravaganza. set up and then show you guys how my neat little new teapot works. Okay. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back with all of my <laughs> tea making accoutrements. Here is my, how do I say it, Piao Yi, that's right, my Piao Yi teapot. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you. Make a little cup of tea. Um, so I first want to read the instructions. Made in Taiwan. Okay. It says, put tea leaves, tea bags, or coffee grounds into the inner pot. That is this part. No filter paper is required when making coffee. Add boiling water. Use the outer pot as a serving pot. That's this one. Use the inner pot to continuously brew tea or coffee. I'll show you what that means in a minute. It says the outer pot can serve as a drinking cup. I'm not actually going to use the outer pot as a drinking cup. here, some loose tea, loose leaf tea. I'm going to be brewing with my Piaoi teapot. Well, I'm not going to use a teaspoon, but I am going to use must be my most used Thrifty Thursday item to date. <laughs> so I'm going to use this to scoop out some tea into the cup. Okay, so I'm going to take this lid off. this is going to work is in here there's a little mesh sort of strainer and in the bottom if you can see that really well there's a little silver ball that when you push the button is raised and when you push the button it allows all the water to uh, be drained out into your pot the tea leaves remain in the cup. I'll show you. So I want to open up my bag and start scooping my tea. See all the little flower 
flowers and leaves and stuff. Oh, it smells really good. It smells kind of like honey. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get it onto the light. Okay. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. I'm gonna get a little scoop. Tiny scoop over here. Now what I want to do is probably just put this back in here. And I'm gonna pour the hot water over the tea. And fill it all the way up. Just let my tea steep. You can see that. I like to let it steep for about five minutes, at least five, just to get some good flavor. I'm gonna take this out and set it here in the lid because it's a little drippy. For these, this tea, and just go ahead and steep another cup. And set this aside. And I brought my favorite, my current favorite teacup. I just I like having my I like to have green tea in the morning sometimes with lemon, and I like having it in. And I got this, uh, amazingly enough, at a thrift store. I thrift shop a lot, and you guys, if there's any takeaway that I want you to get from this Thrifty Thursday series, is that thrift shopping is a wonderful way to get the things that you need and sometimes the things you want without having to pay retail price for them. As you guys have seen over the past uh, 
like 12 weeks now, I found some really cool stuff for crazy cheap. And I think thrift stores are just so great for so many people. Especially if you're, you know, you're first starting out. Maybe you've just moved out for the first time. You've got your own place and you need things. You know, you need dishes or curtains or rugs or what have you. Or maybe you are just down on your luck financially right now. A lot of people are. In, in this country, at least, with the way the economy is right now, so. Thrift stores are really excellent resources for, for, for lots of people. So, anyway, no more soapbox for me. I just, it's something that I feel strongly about, and I, I hope that this series, I guess, is shown you all the great things that you can find if you just, if you just look. So here's my first cup of tea. I'm really glad that I found this because the fall and winter months are coming and it's going to start getting colder. And I really, really love to have hot tea in the colder months. Now this is a chamomile tea and it's caffeine free. This is a tea that's really good for winding down at the end of the day, especially before bed. It has sort of natural calming <laughs> properties. So this is a very good bedtime or relaxing time tea to drink. I recommend I sometimes like to sweeten mine, but if you're going to sweeten your chamomile tea, I recommend using a very light hand because it has a really delicate flavor already. It's not, it's not a strong tea, so you don't want to overpower the light chamomile flavor with too much sweetener. I recommend just a little bit of honey. Maybe a teaspoon max. Okay. I'm gonna do my second cup now. So I'm just gonna place this in here, right over the pot, and press the button. And it just releases. Hi, I'm Bob Ross. I want to thank you for bringing me into your homes once again and welcome you to this week's Time Travel Tuesday. Coming in at number five in the votes for this week's topic were those happy little Polly Pockets. Number four, the TV show Full House. And number three, Dragon Ball Z, that crazy little Goku.